Alright, what's happening out there everybody? I hope you're all feeling fantastic today because we're taking it back to 1987 to talk about a movie I consider to be perfect. That film, of course, is the Arnold Schwarzenegger classic Predator, directed by John McTiernan. This is one of my all-time favorite movies, and despite it coming out decades ago, it's still just as good, if not better, than tons of action movies today. So let's stop wasting time and let's just dive right into this classic. Now you guys know the story in this one, after pushing too many pencils for the CIA, that son of a bitch Dylan cooks up a story, he drops Dutch and his men right into the meat grinder, they learn there is something hunting them out in that jungle, and it ain't no man, it's dug in deeper than an Alabama tick, and Dutch's team, they ain't got no time to bleed, but if this ugly motherfucker can bleed, they can kill it, but if they do, they're not gonna wanna stick around, they're gonna have to get to the chopper if they wanna make it out of the jungle alive. <laughs> Predator was released in June of 1987 with an estimated budget of $18 million. It would go on to gross just over $98 million at the global box office, and it was a pure action movie with larger-than-life characters. Their personalities were just soaked with tough guy bravado and endless one-liners inside of a movie that delivers a buffet of violent action. It delivered a tightly-paced story and showed showcased arguably one of the coolest aliens in cinematic history. The focus of this movie was on the practical effects and the old school stunt work, which is why the movie still looks fantastic more than 30 years later. And how can we forget the just imposing, tension filled score from Alan Silvestri? He created an iconic instrumental beat for an iconic villain, and there isn't a moment in this movie that doesn't feel amplified by the unnerving score from Silvestri. And I can't deny it, and I won't deny it. No matter how many times I watch this movie, just seeing Dutch and his men traversing across the jungle with all its noises surrounding them and Silvestri scoring. It just gets me up on the edge of my seat every time. That really tells you something about the quality of this movie because on paper it's extremely simple but with creativity put into just all the layers of detail and just the right pieces being plugged in together the result is another simplistically perfect movie much like Die Hard would be the following year which was coincidentally also directed by John McTiernan. Come to the coast, we'll get together, have a few laughs. But there's no doubt the cast here must also be credited for making this such a great movie. I mean, Arnold, he's always going to be Arnold. He's a superstar. He's perfect as Dutch from the dialogue delivery to his mannerisms and his gestures. I mean, he truly did create that man among men vibe in this movie that made him the undeniable leader of this group. I mean, Arnold in this movie is a human action figure. He without question makes this movie fantastic and he captured every ounce of the confident badass that this story needed him to. Something that I think was extremely important because with the addition of this massive predator, not just any man is going to realistically come across as even being able to stand a chance. But Arnold as Dutch, I gotta say, he made it work. I mean, he was slightly humanized despite being that complete action hero mold. He captured pure fear, uh, moments of desperation. He also had some expressions and activities here and there that showed his brain was working on real ideas of how to take this alien out. So in the end, it results into a great great battle between two cunning killers. But Arnold was not alone in this one. Apollo Creed himself, Carl Weathers, was fantastic as Dylan. Bill Duke was as intimidating as ever as the tough-as-nails soldier that kind of had a heart to him. And you can't forget Jesse the Body Ventura or his badass minigun that he nicknamed Old Painless. I mean, he comes in to deliver a few great lines before getting his guts blown out. I mean, he wasn't in the movie for long, but his entire run of dialogue consisted of just nicely staged textbook 80s action movie one line that just bring about childhood nostalgia every time I watch them. Son of a bitch is dug in like an Alabama tick. You're hit. You're bleeding, man. I ain't got time to bleed. Ah! 
as for the rest of the guys, I mean, they're all perfect for their roles as well. They all had a part to play on this team of mercenaries and their prideful chemistry back and forth with one another, I think definitely made them feel like the tight knit group of soldiers they were supposed to be. In other words, this was the perfect group of tough guys to toss into the jungle as hunters who quickly become the hunted. The team uh, just doesn't seem to have a weakness and it really elevated the stakes of the plot nicely, which is where I think the perfectly structured storyline comes into play. It's a textbook three-act formula. It sets the stage with our characters and the unknown jungle backdrops. This immediately builds a lot of intrigue and a looming tension that they were just way in over their heads without even knowing it. They stumble across some skinned soldiers, the very ones they were set out to find. Something is definitely not right, and as the viewer, you know what's going on before them, which creates an investment in wanting to see where things were going to go for this group that suddenly doesn't feel so tough as they did when the movie first started. After a violent village battle to deliver some action in the closing of the first act, the guys start getting plucked off one by one and the pace really from there never slows down. The entire second act is a suspenseful game of cat and mouse in the jungle. We get teases of this high-tech predator stalking this group. The team gets just decimated in a variety of ways that creates a lot of horrific moments while at the same time showcasing the skill and capability of this mysterious alien predator. The middle act climax is fantastic fantastic where the booby traps go south and the team gets separated for the final time. It was just excellently crafted. Mac and Dylan, they go running off in pursuit of this alien. They just momentarily end their squabble just before ending up as kills on the predator stat sheet. It creates chaos and a complete lack of control by the soldiers, which equals just a great frantic mood to lure you in as the viewer. This string of scenes is very adrenaline pumping and it's just the definition of edge of your seat action. That is when this movie kicks off one of the all-time great third acts in my opinion, but before diving into that, let's go back to a ridiculously over-the-top scene from earlier in the movie when this group of well-trained mercenaries show no hesitation in wasting an obscene amount of ammunition for a team that knew they only had so much to spare. completely gratuitous, it's self-indulgent, but it's also fantastic to watch, it's a memorable scene, it's also the perfect scene to test your surround speakers, but it actually needed to happen to ensure that Arnold would have to use his traditional hunting traps and tricks to just fight this predator in one last final one-on-one -on -one battle. I mean, Arnold uses his remaining supplies, his MacGyver ingenuity and mother nature around him to build a series of traps and weapons. This goes on for a handful of minutes and it's fantastic, there's no dialogue, just the imposing beat of Silvestri's score, and it's nothing short of amazing for action movie nerds like myself who grew up loving this movie. the entirety of the final act is free of dialogue. It was a bold choice but extremely effective for this movie. It was subtle but it also captured this faint indication that it really was indeed just down to the Predator versus Arnold in the nighttime jungle. It created a bit of a primal atmosphere that I think was perfect for the closing of this story while also being able to be different than the other action movies in the genre that traditionally focus on spectacle to close out their final acts. I love how the final battle between Arnold and this predator really takes its time. It elevates the tension perfectly. Arnold runs out of his weapons and his tricks. It's really just down to man versus alien. There's still no comparison to the physical attributes between them, but the script works in a couple of nice twists and turns to make it all believable enough. Arnold wins this fight, but barely, and that was something I loved about just the progression of this film's final act overall. The result is a very gritty, visually appealing closing that is better than tons of modern day action movies out there. The jungle landscapes, the musical scoring, and a practical look to the Predator were just the perfect recipe and that's why the rewatch value on this movie I think is going to stand the test of time. The conceptual design of this Predator was phenomenal, it's just a timeless look, the practical creation of it was able to bring this creature to life in a way that modern computer effects have failed to do in the more recent movies and for this one, it allowed the direction from McTiernan to put the eye of the camera in the right place at the right time and the result is some immersive and just absolutely brutal action that is fantastic. No! So 
it should be no surprise, Predator from me is going to get 100% on the meter. This movie, in my opinion, accomplished all it set out to and more. It's perfect from start to finish. It's a perfect blend of action, science fiction, and horror. Watching this movie as a kid very much felt like a horror movie in places, and those moments still deliver some nostalgic terror all these years later. Arnold is still making movies today, but this is always going to be one of his finest movies. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, drop it a thumbs up. Leave a comment below. I'd love to talk movies with you guys. Share it with your friends. And without question, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can never miss a video. Here are some links to some recent reviews just in case you missed them. All my social media links and the link to our official website are down in the description below. And I'll catch you next time.